in this lecture, I want to introduce the exponential smoothing forecasting technique, which is also known as the exponentially weighted moving average. To start off this conversation, let's take a look at a data set. The orange line plots actual sales data, and the blue line shows the four period moving average forecasts. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the last 10 weeks in this data set. If we use a simple four period moving average forecasting technique, our forecast for period 53 will be the average of the demand observations for periods 49 to 52. In this case, y hat 53 then equals 413 units. To clarify, this means that we develop a forecast for period 53 by applying equal weights to each of the four most recent demand observations. Of course, we could argue that any forecast for period 53 should put a greater weight on the most recent demand observation than on more distant periods. After all, last week's demand may be a better indicator of future demand than sales from several weeks or even months ago. This argument is at the core of the exponential smoothing method. This technique derives its name from the fact that it applies an exponentially declining set of weights to develop forecasts for future time periods. Let me explain. We will call y hat sub t the forecast for some future time period t. This forecast will be calculated as the weighted average of two components. The first component is the actual demand observation in the immediately preceding period t minus 1. And the second component is the forecast for that same period t minus 1. A weighting factor alpha, that is between 0 and 1, is applied to calculate the weighted average of these two components. I admit that at this point it is not yet evident how we apply an exponentially declining set of weights to past demand observations in order to calculate a forecast. But bear with me. Now let's take a look at the forecast for period t minus 1 y hat sub t minus 1 will be calculated as the weighted average of actual demand in the period before that, y sub t minus 2, and the forecast for period t minus 2. Now let me rewrite this. So our forecast will be based on demand in the immediately preceding period t minus 1 with a weight of alpha. Moreover, our forecast will also draw on actual demand in period t minus 2 with a weight of 1 minus alpha times alpha. Now we can see that for any value of alpha between 0 and 1, the weight we apply to period t minus 2 will be lower than the weight we apply to period t minus 1. And the same logic will extend to more distant past demand observations. This may still sound pretty abstract, but let me show you what the distribution of weights looks like for an alpha value of 0.2. If we use the exponential smoothing forecasting technique with an alpha of 0.2, our forecast will apply a weight of 0.2 to the immediately preceding demand observation in period minus 1 and we see that an exponentially declining set of weights is applied to more distant demand observations. Now let's also take a look at the example where alpha is equal to 0.8. In this case, we place greater emphasis on the most recent available demand observation, and we place very little emphasis on more distant demand observations. So let me show you what it looks like when we apply the exponential smoothing method for alpha values of 0.8 and 0.2 to our data set. When we use a relatively large weighting factor alpha, our forecast will be heavily influenced by more recent demand observations. On the other hand, 
if we use a relatively low weighting factor, our forecast will smooth out short-term fluctuations in demand. This is why we call it exponential smoothing. In a separate Excel-based video, I will show you how we can implement the exponential smoothing method. At that point, I will also explain more about how we can choose the value of the weighting factor alpha.